Hello and welcome to another episode of How To Adam Audio. My name is Stefan Maurer, I am the product manager at Adam Audio, and in today's video we are going to explain why studio monitors are designed with a vertical or horizontal orientation and whether you can use them in a different way than intended. This actually is a question that we frequently get from you guys, so we thought, let's get everybody on the same page. Studio monitors often are optimized for a wide usable sweet spot where the sound of the speakers is consistent, so you can move around and still make reliable mixing decisions. Using the speaker in a different orientation than they are intended to be in can cause significant errors in the frequency response when you as a listener are not perfectly on axis. What makes this even worse is that the error modulates when you're moving left and right on your desk or console. Here's why. In multi-way speakers, there are at least two drivers that are working in adjacent frequency bands. For example, a tweeter and a woofer in a two-way system or a tweeter and a mid-range driver in a three-way system. In their joint crossover region, both drivers reproduce the same frequencies and their individual contributions are overlapping or adding up on their way to the listener's ears. The correct addition of these contributions is critical to achieve a smooth frequency response. Getting this right for a listening position on axis is a crucial part of the development process of a studio monitor. Now, in non-coincidental speaker designs, meaning that the drivers are not sitting in the same spot, unlike a coaxial design, the tweeter and the adjacent driver are usually vertically aligned on top of each other. When the listener is now moving away from the on-axis position, which means going sideways along the console most of the time, the distances between the ear and each individual driver are still identical. The contribution from both drivers arrives more or less at the same time at the ear as it is intended and consequently the frequency response is not impacted. In case you now rotate this arrangement by 90 degrees and then move left and right, the distance between the ear and each driver will be different and the phase alignment of the drivers is affected negatively, all depending on how far off you are. For very low frequencies and their respective long wavelength, this small offset is not an issue, but around the crossover frequency where both drivers are active, the wavelength usually is significantly smaller. So how critical is this in the real world? With our T7V, we are talking about a crossover frequency of 2.6 kHz with a respective wavelength of just a bit more than 13 cm. Let's say you are using the T7Vs on the side, so the tweeter and woofer are next to each other. You are listening at a distance of approximately 1 meter. Now you are moving 30 cm to the side, which is not much. In this case, you will be already at 25 degrees off axis, where the difference in the distance ear to tweeter versus ear to woofer is more than 4 cm. At 13 cm wavelength, that amounts to almost a 120 degree phase shift between the two drivers, which will result in a significant dip in the frequency response. So, generally speaking, for wavelength, that are in the range of the spacing of the two drivers or shorter, this can result, as a worst case, in a complete phase rotation of one of the driver's contribution. When the two contributions are out of phase, they won't add up properly anymore, which will result in attenuation or even cancellation of certain frequencies. Again, since the difference in relative driver distance changes with the listening angle, the impact on the frequency response will be changing also. That's not good for judging tonality or making reliable EQ decisions. That's why you will find the tweeter on top of the woofer in most two-way systems and the mid-range and tweeter vertically spaced in most three-way systems. So why is it okay for the woofer to sit on the side of so many three-way designs? Well, the wavelength of the crossover frequency between mid-range and woofer is already pretty long, more than a meter typically. So the spacing of the drivers is not relevant here, since it is much smaller than the wavelength. And going off axis does not really influence the addition of the mid-range driver and woofer. The inherent dispersion characteristics in our AMT tweeter design and HPS waveguides further impact these inaccuracies. Our AMT tweeter and waveguide design in its native orientation has a wide horizontal dispersion for even coverage and a wide sweet spot, but the vertical dispersion is quite limited to suppress desk and ceiling bounds and all the complications of that. 
This design is primary to the Atom Audio sound. When turned on its side, the dispersion advantages become quite the opposite, with enhanced vertical bounce and pretty limited horizontal coverage. It is for these exact situations that Adam Audio allows the tweeter and waveguide to be reoriented in many of our flagship S-Series monitors. At the end of the day though, your own monitoring system has to work for you and we can only provide you with our recommendations. Due to the height of speakers, with the vertical orientation and the tweeter being on top of the other drivers, positioning them correctly can be tricky, especially if your stands are not adjustable or your console is quite high. Then there's a risk that you cannot get the tweeter to point at your ears. So, if you still want or maybe even have to put the speaker in a different orientation than intended, please rotate any waveguide accordingly, if your speaker allows you to do that. Thereby, you can still take the advantage of the optimized dispersion of the tweeter and mid-range driver. Or you could look into speakers with a horizontal design from the start, like our A77X or S3H midfield monitors, which have a significantly lower profile. We are happy to answer any open question you might have regarding speaker orientation and design. Also, we would be very interested in your experience with alternative speaker setups. If you'd like to learn more about other topics that we should cover on this channel, please leave us a comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Tschüss!